Welcome back to the wood shop, my friends. It's been a couple few weeks now, hasn't it? We've been doing a lot around here. We did an entire shop uh, remodel, got some new tools, got a new uh, lumber rack up here, horizontal lumber rack, so we got all of our lumber, well, most of our lumber up off of the ground, ton of cleaning while trying to maintain orders. Uh, it's been a wild few weeks. But I wanted to come back and do another video because in today's video, we're making a spoon. That's right, we're gonna carve this spoon out. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. And hopefully you guys will have fun. You guys will learn something um, and just be able to appreciate the process of making these. We've sold countless dozens of these. I don't even know how many of these spoons we've sold. I have made these spoons until my fingers are bleeding, literally, and they're just wrapped in bandages. Um, but people seem to love them. So hopefully it'll be cool for you guys to see how we actually make these. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is pick some wood. I'm just using a piece of uh, scrap walnut here, project that did not work out. So we're gonna set that down. We'll draw the shape out, um, the outline of the spoon, and then we'll go cut it out. cut this out on the bandsaw is the easiest way um, and then I'll also show you while we're at the bandsaw I'm gonna take off just a little bit of material off of the back of this um, the actual bowl shape of the spoon itself I find that it's easier to do that on the bandsaw than trying to do it by hand so let's cut this out real quick and then we'll keep moving on So the method that I use for spoon carving um, the bowl of the spoon is pretty traditional. I use a hook knife, a spoon knife, whatever you want to call it. This is a hook knife though. And the way that you do this, um, everybody has their own personal preference on how they do it. I hold my spoon blank like this. Let me see if I can angle this a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So I hold my spoon like this. I grab my hook knife right here. I put my thumb on the end of the spoon and then, and you can see right there, it takes a chunk out. And this is how I carve every single spoon in my shop. Yes, it does take a lot of time. Yes, it can be dangerous. These, um, these hook knives are, incredibly sharp and all it takes is one you know slip up right there but thankfully I've never um, gouged myself too bad but this is it folks just sit here and do this uh, depending on the wood that you're using uh, 
it can take anywhere from, you know, if it's like a softer hardwood, sometimes it only takes a couple minutes. If it's a really uh, figured, full of knots piece of uh, walnut, sometimes it can take 10 or 15 minutes to carve a spoon. But I've done so many of these that I can just blast through it pretty quick. So um, I'm gonna speed this up and then I'll show you guys what we do after this. Okay, so there you can see we got the bulk of the material out of there. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now what we need to do is this handle needs to, we need to round all of these edges off, get it a nice round handle. And then we also need to remove the rest of this material on the outside. And this is, um, this is the part where it's not traditional. Um, same as the bandsaw, you know, traditionally you would do all of this um, with like a carving knife or a um, whittling knife. Uh, but I sell these all day, every day. So I have to speed up the uh, production process as much as I can during the day. So I'm gonna start off for the handle itself, I'm going to use a um, I'm going to use a round bit on my uh, router table, and that's just the same thing. It's just material removal. You're trying. I'm trying to remove as much material as I can to cut down on having to remove material material with the belt sanders because that takes a lot longer. So I'll run this through the router table real quick, get all of those corners rounded, and then we'll move over to the belt sander and we'll start uh, finishing the re material removal process. Okay, so you can see here, it didn't take off a tremendous amount of material, but it did take off enough that that's gonna save some of our sandpaper and make our job a little bit easier when we go over there. So let's move over there and I'll show you guys um, how we remove all the rest of this material. I do most of this with my one by 30 belt sander. Yeah, it takes a few minutes, but uh, it works pretty well. So let's do that. That's where we are now. You see that this is nice and rounded. We got most of the material off of the back of here. You can see some ridges. Focus. 
We got some ridges, but we'll remove those uh, next. So what we do next is we're going to take this over and we're going to use a random orbital sander uh, just to knock all of this down and get everything nice and smooth. All right, I hope you guys can hear me okay with this mask on. Um, so over here, I'm going to make sure this is plugged in. Sorry, I got a bunch of routers and stuff in the way. Yep, plugged in. Okay, so, as I was showing you over there, uh, the spoon, here, I'm just gonna take this off for a second. Ugh. The spoon, we got most of the material removed, but because that's an 80 grit belt, uh, it just tears into the wood. So if you look up close, you can see all these lines in the wood. You can see all these ridges. It's not perfectly round anywhere. Um, so we're going to use a random orbital sander. I'm going to start with 120 grit and then we're going to go up to 220 grit. Um, and then after that, we're going to have to go in and hand sand all of this um, literally by hand. So let's do this real quick and then we'll do that. Okay, now you can see all those ridges are gone. It's nice and smooth. There's no deep scratches anywhere. This is starting to look like a nice little spoon. Uh, are we done sanding? Not even close. Now we have to go over there and we have to sand out this inside bowl and get that just glass smooth. So let's do that. Okay, so to do the inside of this bowl, uh, I found the easiest way um, for me is to use little thin strips of sandpaper um, that you can push on it with your thumb and it'll contour to that shape a lot easier, allowing you to knock down all those, uh, those ridges inside of the bowl itself. So I'm going to use 120 grit, then we're going to do 220 grit or 240 grit. Yeah, 240 grit. And then we're going to do 320 grit and then I'll show you guys what we do from there. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It's real simple. Hold your spoon. You're going to take this like this, use your thumb and just press in there and just start working that, trying to knock down all those high spots. Officially finished sanding the spoon. Well, almost. I lied. Almost. Oh, cameras have stuff on it. There we go. Um, the next thing that we have to do, because this is going to be in the kitchen um, and it's going to get wet and dry and wet and dry over and over and over again, just like our cutting boards, we want to pop the grain on this. We'll raise all those little wood fibers. Um, you know, it's real smooth right now, but the second that it gets wet, those wood fibers are going to stand up. So we're going to do that step now. We're going to manually stand those wood fibers up by getting this uh, just a little bit damp with water. And then we'll go do and we'll do one, we'll go through and we'll do one more final sanding to knock all of those fibers down. And then you won't have that um, happen the next time that you get it wet. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so we're doing nothing special here. I'm just going to get a shop rag, a little blue paper towel. Spray some water on this, get it nice and wet. And then I'm just gonna wipe the spoon 
make sure that you wipe every single square inch of this spoon because you want the whole thing to get wet so those wood fibers stand up. Make sure we get it all nice and wet. Okay, and then a uh, pro tip from me, a professional, is you don't have to sit here and let this thing dry uh, if you don't want to. You can use a blowtorch. Just make sure to move the torch. You see it dries it right off. Because that water is not soaked into the wood, it just soaked into the very top layer. So then you just move this around. And dry that wood off. Perfect. So now, when I feel this, this feels really rough. Um, that's not smooth at all. And I misplaced my sandpaper because it's one of those days. I'm gonna grab some more sandpaper real quick and then we'll finish sanding this down. Okay, got more sandpaper. Uh, so we're gonna finish this off with 600 grit sandpaper. That's a really fine sandpaper. This thing's gonna be real smooth when we get done. So the same thing that we've been doing for the last 25 minutes is we're just gonna sand until this gets super smooth. And just to show you guys the technique that I'm using when I do stuff like this, I hold the I hold my fingers curved like this with the sandpaper right there. I'll kind of um, pin it down with my thumb here. And then what I'm doing is pushing down and just rolling my hand over it. That way you can just help smooth it out, make it nice and rounded. You don't get a lot of harsh edges or anything. Okay, that backside. Yep, that's nice and smooth. So then we're just gonna sand top piece right here. Sand around the rim as well, don't forget that. While we're here, we'll just try to round these just a tiny bit. Okay. Sand around the rim right here, make sure that's nice and smooth. Constantly checking with your finger to see if you can feel any of those little wood fibers. Feels good though. And then the same thing that we did before. I'm gonna take our thumb, sandpaper, and just do one final sanding of the inside of this spoon bowl. All right, that feels good. Let's see if we'll focus. See how smooth that looks already? It's if you look at the top of the spoon, it's reflecting light um, from the overhead lights. That's exactly where we want it. So now we'll move on to the best part of this entire process. What is the best part of the entire spoon making process? Obviously the oiling. It is so satisfying. Uh, I'm using, this is just food grade mineral oil. This is what you want to use on anything that's kitchen uh, oriented. You don't want to use any other finishes because they're probably not going to be food safe. This stuff is great. Oh, I'm so excited. Every single time. Uh, let me see if I can try to find a good camera angle for this because I want to see you guys how much this mineral oil makes this uh, all the color pop, especially in walnut. Walnut is my favorite spoon to make. Okay, so here's our spoon. Uh, I don't know a good way to do this with this camera here, but we're just gonna dump some of this oil in the top and then I'll just move it around and show you guys what it looks like. So already, 
I, I gotta pick the camera up and show you this. Look at that color. Look at that color and the walnut. Walnut is so beautiful. So, the camera to say, I'm just gonna pour this out into my hand and then we'll coat this entire thing. Make sure to get it all. Make sure to get the um, the end grain right there really well. End grain soaks up way faster than uh, this edge grain does, so make sure to hit that a couple times, coat it a couple times. But so yeah, we're gonna sit here and we'll let this soak. You want the oil to actually soak in as deep as it can. But look at that. Look at that color. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so we'll let this soak and then it'll be done. All right, my friends, there we have it. One completely finished walnut frontier spoon. This thing is awesome. Um, you can tell, I don't know, hopefully you guys can tell, it's large enough that you can stir with this thing, uh, you can prepare food with it, and then um, you can also eat with it. It's perfect for eating. This is, this is what you use out in the sticks when you're out camping and you got a nice cast iron and you made some stew and you want to just use one spoon. Use this. It works for everything. See all the gorgeous color in there? You can see all the wood grain. These things are just awesome. There you go, there's a good shot of it. So, uh, I highly recommend anybody who's interested in making one of these, buy a hook knife, buy a cheap hook knife. You can find these for 20 bucks maybe on Amazon. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money on one. As long as it's sharp, it'll do the job. Um, and just try it out, it's so rewarding to make one of these um, and then to use it and also if you have uh, like parents out there if you have children that are wanting to get into woodworking or whittling or doing anything uh, like this buy them a hook knife as long as they're old enough and you trust them buy them a hook knife if you're concerned about them cutting their fingers um, buy a what are they they're the archery gloves for bow and arrow archery it comes with two leather um, finger covers. Buy an archery glove, they're $10 maybe. Cut the leather fingers off, put one, well, yeah, put one on this thumb. So when you're cutting, or excuse me, this thumb, when you're cutting, you can't cut into the thumb. It's that simple. Get a little bit of leather, your kids will be fine. They'll have a ton of fun doing it. Um, and then you get awesome spoons at the end. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I don't know what we're doing next time, but we'll have another one out soon. Bye.